Good morning. You know, when Marsh and I got into sailing, I started taking a subscription to a magazine called Attitudes and Latitudes. It was produced by Bob Lipkin. He was also known as Bob Bitchin. He stood about 6'6". He was over 300 pounds. A massive mountain of a man. He was covered in tattoos. Earlier on in his life, he had been a part of a, a motorcycle gang, a Harley gang. And he had lived quite the li wild lifestyle. He had finally left all of that, though, and got into sailing, and it saved his life. He got off the drugs, straightened himself out, and he started sailing around the world as he met his wife, Jody. And they had a couple of children. They went up having grandchildren now. Bob's now up into his 70s, but he is still such an amazing guy. I met him at a boat show in Annapolis. He and Jody were having lunch in a restaurant, and we sat down and got to visit with him. And he was such an enjoyable and pleasant guy. You know, he produced a magazine that tried to sell you on the sailing lifestyle. And they would have all these pictures of sandy beaches and, and palm trees and pina coladas. And, oh, it always looks so lovely. And then they showed pictures of people in boats. As they're sailing along, the wind is always from behind. The sails are full. The boat is level and it is gently moving along. And you'd see someone in the cockpit looking out, staring with a smile on their face and a cocktail in their hand. But Bob was one who was very realistic. And he always used to like to say in his columns that he wrote, that's not the way it really is. Oh, there are days, sandy beaches and palm trees and pina coladas, and there's days when the wind is from behind and it's lovely. But you know, there's also days when the wind is on the nose and the boat is crashing into the waves, and the water is sluicing down the deck, and the boat is heeled over, and you're hanging on for dear life, and it's cold, and you're wet. Those are also part of the sailing lifestyle. He always wrote an article each month for the magazine entitled Attitudes, and one of his favorite saying when he tells these different stories of good times and really rotten times he would always end it by saying, just remember, the difference between an ordeal and an adventure is your attitude. I've never forgotten that. Fifteen years later and all the miles we've sailed, all the lives, years we've lived, the difference between an ordeal and an adventure is your attitude. I've been reading Paul's letter to the Philippians. Paul is in prison in Rome. Life isn't easy. Prison in Rome was not easy. And he's writing to the Philippians, his, one of his early churches to start. And Paul is so full of, of gratitude. He is so full of joy as he writes to these people from being in prison. He understood what does it mean to take care of your attitude so that it's not an ordeal. Life is still an exciting adventure. And you know, that's kind of where I am right now. Now in isolation, five days, I hadn't crossed that threshold out of the bedroom. Now I'm trying to make sure that I protect Marsh as much as I can. She is so good in the way she's taking care of me. But I don't want to infect her, and I don't want to get out and infect anybody else. No, I'm going to follow the protocol that will talk about being at home 10 days, and I want to have a negative test. I don't want to be cavalier and go out and infect anybody else. And you know, right now in Oklahoma, the numbers are just exploding. I was reading today that we now have, yesterday, 1,475 new cases in one day. There's 821 people in the hospital from the COVID virus. 321 in ICU. Those are record numbers for us. You know, that's not my adventure right now. I pray for them because that's not really where I am. I don't feel well, but I'm not sick like that. But I know there are people who are. And so I want to pray for them, and I want to make sure I do everything I can not to infect and help pass on the virus, for you never know how someone else's body is, is going to react. But what I have found is that I have more time to be thinking and I'm reflecting. It does make you very reflective. 
And what I found as I have been sitting reflecting in this room is really how grateful I am. So incredibly grateful for so many people to be so kind. So many people who have been going out of their way to express their concern and offer their prayers and to wish me the best. I just got to tell you, it fills me with a sense of gratitude. I'm so grateful for God's grace. Grateful for friends and love that is shared. And what I have found is, even if it, life isn't going the way you planned, you can choose not to be frustrated and instead to be grateful. And when you're filled with the spirit of gratitude, it really does change an ordeal into an adventure. Go out and make it a great day.